My name is Charlotte James and I am a medical student at the University of Vermont Larner College of Medicine. Today I will be discussing trends surrounding current COVID-19 hotspots in areas that are returning to normal. The COVID-19 pandemic continues with over 2.3 million cases in the United States, resulting in over 120,000 deaths as of June 25, 2020. Since reopening, several states have experienced an increase in new cases, including Florida, Texas, and Arizona, while others, such as Illinois, Maryland, and Virginia, have continued to see their case levels fall. Here we will explore where these two distinct paths forward may have diverged. As of June 25th, new documented cases of and hospitalizations due to COVID-19 have been rising steadily in Arizona, Florida, and Texas since their widespread reopening weeks earlier. Although testing capacity is increasing in these states and across the country, this is not the reason we are seeing an increase in the number of cases in new hotspots. For instance, an Arizona testing blitz that ended the week of May 17th showed cases to have increased 138% though testing only increased by 17%. This discrepancy provides compelling evidence that the increased case counts are largely from increased community transmission and not just from increasing testing. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has also acknowledged that the share of people testing positive for COVID-19 in Florida is accelerating faster than the number of tests being run. Additionally, these states are seeing that the length of time it takes for the current case number to double is also shortening indicating a steep increase in case volume since stay-at-home orders were lifted. Houston, in particular, is on track to becoming the worst affected city in the U.S. if trends persist, according to Dr. Peter Hotez, a professor and dean of the National School of Tropical Medicine at Baylor College of Medicine. While each of these states has had their own individual plans for reopening, they all share three important elements in common recommending masks be worn, but not requiring statewide, a lack of robust contact tracing, and overall vague directions for residents to follow moving forward, simply claiming everyone should follow the CDC guidelines. Not having strict mask guidelines likely has hurt these states, as it, as it has been proven that masks are incredibly important in slowing the spread of COVID-19. Additionally, it is likely that these states where initial COVID-19 outbreaks were small, such as those in the South, may be less likely to take safety guidelines and recommendations seriously. Reopening before total COVID-19 cases were under control in Florida and Texas could have played an additional role in the current resurgence. To contrast with Florida, Texas, and Arizona, Illinois, Maryland, and Virginia are continuing to progress towards responsible reopening with COVID-19 test positivity, hospital admissions, and fatalities in ICU bed usage continuing to trend downwards. In contrast with the numbers in Arizona, Florida, and Texas, these states have been seeing decreased test positivity even with increased testing volume over the last four weeks. This indicates the COVID-19 burden is truly lessening in Illinois, Maryland, and Virginia. Even in Illinois, home to the third largest city in the US, steady economic progress forward has been made without sacrificing public health. Thanks to Governor J.B. Pritzker's five-phase reopening regional plan. Overall, the success of COVID-19 management in states like Illinois, Maryland, and Virginia may be attributed to continued mandated stay-at-home orders, firm mask requirements, and a slow rollout of regional reopening with detailed guidelines to ensure safety. Dr. Scott Gottlieb states that this week is pivotal for states like Arizona, Florida, and Texas, who are experiencing a surge in COVID-19 activity. While younger people are making up the highest number of new reported cases, Dr. Gottlieb warns that if these outbreaks are not controlled, they could spread into the at-risk communities, leading to increased deaths. The longer these outbreaks spread, the harder it will be to bring them back under control. As a reminder, please wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds or clean your hands with an alcohol-based hand sanitizer that contains 60 to 90% alcohol. Be sure to wear a face mask or face covering when in public and remain a safe distance apart. By doing our part to reduce the spread of COVID-19 and caring for ourselves and our loved ones appropriately, essential workers and hospitalized patients can continue to fight the coronavirus safely and effectively. To learn more, visit publichealthcoalition.org.